Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. In this video, we're going to discuss and I'm going to show you how to use my lantern template that you can use to create designs like this. We are actually going to, in this video, create a winter scene. So stay around, it's gonna be a good one. So if you guys caught part one and part two of fixing files in Lightburn, um, I was asked to help uh, one of the viewers with a file that they had that they were having some difficulty with trying to accomplish certain, certain tasks. And I, I got the file and started looking at it and showed them how to, to add the elements they wanted. But then I discovered a whole lot of problems with that file that they weren't even aware of. So I decided I'm going to design a template that's going to be light burn friendly and simple to use that even some of the beginners that have a, a good grasp on the boolean or the boolean tools then you can make some really nice projects that's going to blow people away it's gonna look a lot more difficult than it actually is because I've done the hard work for you in fact I've got <clears throat> this design cutting right now and I'll have this to assemble and show you in just a few minutes but let's look at this template that is available on hobowithwood.com that you can download and create these what, I, what I'm getting ready to show you is gonna be a pretty elaborate file and you ain't got to be that smart to do it. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> you don't have to be that smart. All right, so if we import the file that you would get from hobowithwood.com, we're going to import my lantern template. We're jumping in here, light burn here, open. This is what you get when you go to hobowithwood.com and you get the lantern template. Now, a few things. These are the six sides, including the door that will pivot. And let's take a look here at the physical piece. So you've got six pieces, or six sides, and one of them is actually hinged, so you can open it to access your tea lights. Put a real uh, fire burning candle in there if you've got good insurance. I don't recommend it, but you've got the little piece up here at the top that we're going to show you that's going to be completely customizable along with this piece up here. But this is a real simple design. This, back to the light burn here, we have six basic sides. One of them, which is this piece here, is the actual door. And then these are your pieces. This is your bottom piece. This is an insert for the bottom. And what that is for is it serves as the doorstop, if you will, it I don't even glue it into place. I just assemble it and drop this in in the lower piece, and that just whenever the door goes to swing closed, it gives it something to stop against, and it doesn't go into the interior of the lantern. This is the top piece. These six pieces are what snap into here, and then this piece snaps on here. Be sure that you align that middle slot with that slot because this piece is going to insert through this piece then through this piece and protrude out the bottom of this piece and this is the little lock the little key that will slide into here and lock this into place it just adds another accent another feature to it and it looks pretty cool i've included these over here and these are nothing more than the tool paths that I used to create all of these pieces over here. So if you are creative and you want to do something more, but you don't want to redesign the whole thing, 
Well, these are just the tool paths that are used that will fit with these pieces. So if you design pieces, having those tool paths sometimes can be a little bit of a time saver. It's simple enough to recreate them yourself, but I'm providing them for you so you don't have to go to that trouble. But let's take a look at what you can do with this very basic design. It's going to blow your mind. It's going to be quite easy. And you could go, what? You can do that that quick, that easy? Yep. All right. First thing I'm going to do is, all right, anytime I'm going to modify a file, I never use my original pieces. I always select that, control D, duplicate it, move that over here. I want to leave those alone for right now, and I'm going to work with this. And that's and it's easy enough to go back and always reload it or re-import it. Now I don't have to because I'm it's it's there. So if I mess up, I can just undo it. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these pieces and I'm going to bring them down here. And right now, in fact, let's talk about this file for one second. When you import this file, they are not butted up against each other. There is a space between each of the pieces that is more time consuming consuming when you go to engrave and cut these out because it's going to cut these lines twice when you could butt them up against each other and eliminate that. But I have been uh, playing with my kerf and I increased my uh, kerf offset to uh, accommodate the, uh, the kerf of the laser. And I'm putting these things together now with absolutely no glue. But when you increase your kerf, you cannot butt these up against each other because then it would overlap each other and it would be a problem. So they're not butted up against each other now in any place in the design. They are ready to resize your slots and shapes. If we go to that tool and you look at resize slots and selection right now, everything's grouped or a lot of groups. So you'd have to un ungroup everything and then grab it all again. And then you go into resize slots. And now it's ready to do your slot depth. There is no slot depth that you have to worry about. Slot width, there is. You would measure your material and set that to your material thickness. And then your tab height. You've got tabs on each of these pieces and tabs up here. So you're going to do that uh, before you cut it out. I wouldn't worry about doing it until you've got your design ready and you're actually getting ready to send it to the laser. So if you check it and you go, wait a minute, those are different sizes right now out of the box. Well, yeah, because different things that I'm doing, it doesn't matter because you need to set them for your material for your job. So back over here to what we're going to do for customizing. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to group each of these because right now they're not grouped. I'm going to group that. Group that because I'm getting ready to uh, align all these together. Group, 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 and group. Now I'm going to grab all of those and I'm going to tell it to uh, Alt Shift H, Alt Shift H, or up here in a range and a line, not a line, distribute rather. Alt Shift H. Move horizontally together. And I that was I Rich, the Louisiana hobby guy, showed me that a few weeks ago, and I have really started using that, and I am loving that. Uh, I'm just using the shortcut, the hotkeys. Alt Shift H. That just aligned all those right up against each other docked them next to each other. Now, just for giggles, I'm going to make sure that they are all aligned to the top to each other. Now, I need to ungroup it all again. Ungroup all of it. And now, I'm going to select just the inner shapes. Got all my inners, and I'm going to group that. And I'm going to Control D, duplicate that again and move those over here. And now I've got a new tools that I'm working with. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to jump over to the internet 
and we're going to search for a winter scene a winter a free winter SVG so let's see here so I search for free winter landscapes uh, in an SVG and you want something in a silhouette or a black and white like this. Now this is SVG uh, Heart or what is the website? Yeah, svgheart.com. I am a member there and they got some really nice stuff and I'm, that's the scene that I'm going to use. Uh, not that, go back there. But as long as it's a silhouette like that you could make that work but if you get a free SVG and then a lot of these SVG websites you can go to and get some free stuff you have to watch a lot of ads to get them sometimes but hey if you don't want to pay for stuff it's a good way to get some free stuff all right so I'm going to uh, paste that in here Now I'm going to trace this SVG, right click and trace image, delete image after trace, okay, put that in a, we're going to put it on a cut path, and first thing we're going to do is, these are all grouped, correct? Yep, those are all grouped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and I'm going to grab and hold my shift key and select that and tell it to center up. And you see that's nowhere near big enough. That's okay. Grab just that, hold your control button and drag that out until you fill up all of your panels. Now there's some things about this that I don't like. Like right there, if, if we leave it there in the center like that, or even close to it. If we try to put there to get the buck all in the center, now the doe's all cut in half. If we try to get doe in, the deer's all, the buck's cut in half. But we're going to show you a trick on how to fix that. So I'm going to bring that up to about there. About like that. And now that I've got that there, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to ungroup that whole SVG. And I'm going to come up here and grab all this that's above them and not included and just hit the delete button, get rid of all of that. I don't like these little circles. We're going to get rid of that and that and that. In fact, you know what? I'm going to get rid of all, well, you know, I'm going to keep that star. I'm going to get rid of that star, this guy, this guy. And I'm just selecting and hitting the delete button. I'm going to keep those over the trees. In fact, what I'm going to do, uh, first, we're going to clean this up a little bit. All these little pieces in here, like that piece and that piece and that piece, I don't want, necessarily need all those. And these little pieces right here, all that stuff's going to be just excessive cuts. And these are so small the overall diameter of that whole panel right there is what? It's, uh, go to inches, it's only five inches tall and only, I think, two and a half inches wide. They're not very big. So these are going to be really small pieces. So what I'm going to do is, if you haven't seen this, I shown it in the video the other day, it's really a, a good tool. I'm going to select this tool. Now it's I feel like it's named incorrectly because if you select that tool or that piece right there and you come up here to tools, select shapes smaller than selected. Now to me that says I want to pick everything that's smaller than this one. But when you select that, it actually selects it too. So it should be select this shape and anything smaller than that shape. But if you look, all of these other ones, they're selected. So now all you have to do is hit the, del uh, actually, you know what? I don't want to get, well, you know what? I can get, in fact, I'll even get rid of this one too. Hold my shift key. And while I'm holding the shift key, select that, include that. Start to say, I wouldn't cut that out. But if I'm going to cut this one out, might as well just cut that one out. All right. 
now that I've got all those selected, just hit the delete button. And now they're all gone. That cleans up a whole lot of stuff that's unnecessary. And see the buck still looks good without those in there and it just won't be any excessive burns or cuts in there. Now what are we going to do about the deers? The, the deer being so close to one another and the way that they're being cut in half there. Well, I want to show you a trick. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of my panels and I'm going to put them on a toolpath for right now. And then I'm going to select everything, hold my control button and deselect the toolpath and then group all this together. So now all of that is grouped. Actually, I don't need to do that. I don't need to group it. I'm going to ungroup that. That was a mistake. So again, select everything, hold my shift button and deselect that toolpath or my control button and deselect control and deselect. Now the only thing that's selected is that red cut layer. Everything is ungrouped. So if I go into node editing, it's going to show me all the nodes on everything. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here tight where they're close to each other and I'm going to hold my shift button and I'm going to continue to hold my shift button until I'm through selecting nodes. And I'm just getting all the nodes to the right of the buck. And now I can just come up here and select all those nodes. And now that I've got everything, every node to the right of the buck is selected, I can just use my arrow key to create some space between my deer. And now I'm going to go back to the select tool and everything's still selected. And I'm going to move that over. I still need a little more space. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the buck where I want him. I want the buck to be kind of centered right there. Should have done that to begin with. I want the buck right there. Now I'll go back into node editing. Still everything is ungrouped. This will be easier this time since I've already created some space. Holding my shift key, come down, grab all those, and now I can just grab everything, and now I can just move that dough over until she's where I want her. And that looks pretty good, right about there. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and since that star, those are gone. I hate, that one's out of the completely out of the design. I'm going to get rid of these stars on these completely. So now we're not even anywhere near the original SVG. But you know it was a free piece, but we're not using uh, all of their design, and we begin to modify it and change it. So this is going to be truly unique when we're done. All right, now, if you have elements in your art library that you could add to this, you could add stars or moon or something. Uh, but before we do that, what I'm going to do is everything is ungrouped. Yep. So these inner pieces, they're, they're not selected and they're going to need to be. So, but... Do we need to group it first? Let's see. Select all of it. Hold my control button. Deselect the toolpath. Group it together. And now select the, the toolpath. Hold your shift button. Select that. And do the subtraction. Yep. That's what we want right there. All right. So review. Select all of the cut layer. Hold your shift key and deselect your toolpath there. You want to make sure that all of this is grouped. And right now it is. Now that that's grouped, you want to select your toolpath here first. Then hold your shift button and select that. And use your Boolean, 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 Boolean. 
I'll learn how to say that. In fact, I'll, I'll have to get Rich to help me on the next live stream. I'll get it memorized eventually. But subtract, and there you go. There are six pieces that are ready to insert into these over here. Now what you can do, since we got those done, just hit delete, delete those. These are all grouped, so if you just select one, select, hold your shift, select, nope, those are not grouped, so you need to group all those. Group, and now select that, select that, and tell it to go to center, and now those are all centered up and ready to cut. Now, see, we got a little anomalies here that need to get, be getting rid of again. We need to clean up a little bit. There's one up there. There's one there. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's ungroup everything. Now that we've got it all centered up, everything's ungrouped. And select that and tools. Select shape smaller than selected and hit the delete button. And that cleaned that up. All right, now we're going to add some elements. We're going to make this even more winter-like. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to grab out of my art library some snowflakes. Now these came from LA Hobby Guys uh, forum. So if you don't have much of a art library, uh, you want to jump over to LA Hobby Guys forum and uh, become a member there and you can get into the library and find all kinds of neat downloads. Um, all right, so we're going to we're going to get that one. Add it to the graphic. Now the more elaborate your snowflake is, <laughs> the more cuts it's going to have to make, the longer it's going to be on the cutting on the laser. Now this one is got multiple layers here. Let's put this in a line mode so you can see it. Okay. All right, there we go. So this has actually got uh, multiple offsets. So this is going to have to be edited. So I'm going to ungroup it. And I'm going to grab the innermost piece and delete that. Grab these inner pieces and delete them. Now there's going to be a trick to getting these pieces not to fall away. Because if you're not careful and you just put this on there, let's grab this. Put that back together as a group. And if I just brought this down here and centered this up like so, and then cut that out. Well, when that cuts out, those six little inner diamonds, they're just going to be uh, all gone. In fact, the, the outer perimeter will cut out, and anything inside of it will just be a void. It'll just be a, a large outline silhouette of that snowflake and it's not going to really look like a snowflake that good so there's a, a, another step that we got to do to make this look good so if everything's grouped no that's ungrouped all right good so i can take this hold my shift key select that and tell it to center and there we go now that that's centered i can stretch that out and i'm going to bring it until she's and i'm going to go ahead and put this one up higher a little bit I'm going to put her like that so that it's overlapping the both sides and the top. Now I can take and select this piece. And what you have to think about when you're trying to do this, if you look at what's selected there, that is one solid piece. Okay? That's one solid piece. Well, we want to subtract that snowflake from that solid piece. So you select that piece, hold your shift button, and select that snowflake and actually what you have to do first we've got to ungroup it ungroup the snowflake so now you can only select just the perimeter you're not going to be selecting those inner pieces so select that large piece hold your shift button select that perimeter of the snowflake and use the uh, subtraction tool put it back on a cut path Select all those and put those on a cut path. And now that's ready to cut out. Now I'm not going to bother doing that multiple times here and showing you everything that needs to be done. But because it's just repetitive. We're going to do all that over and over and over. 
add snowflakes, different shapes, different sizes, rotate it, and just have some fun things, fun, have some fun with it, with the layout and the positioning. Um, then that is a really elaborate design and ready to cut out. Now you need to come over here and customize and personalize these six pieces. You don't have to, but I recommend it. It's what really the, the little details are what make this look so nice. I drew uh, a star. Um, and in fact, I'll show you. Well, now nah, I'll, I'll wait to the end to show you what I did. But I drew a star and put that in there. And I put another snowflake in here and then cut all that out and assembled it. And the laser just finished a second ago. So I'm going to grab that off the laser. I use this with a kerf. I cut it out with a, uh, a positive 0.13 kerf with the laser I'm using now, which I will not name. Uh, it's, it was not the Lasermatic 10. I'm trying a new laser out, uh, kicking the tires on it. I'm really impressed with it. And I've been trying to negotiate with the laser company about promoting the laser. They actually reached out to me and said, hey, would you be willing to do this? We'll send you a laser. And I said, well, guess what? I've already got one. And I will be willing to review your laser if you're willing to send me something else. Well, that didn't seem like that was, you know, good. And I said, well, you can pay me. You know, and that didn't seem good. So we haven't been working anything out. And so I'm not going to give them any free publicity. It's a really nice machine. It's not, not as nice as the Roly, but it does some things that the Roly can't do. But we're not going to discuss any of that now because we're not going to promote that laser. Uh, but let me grab this off the laser, assemble it real quick, and show you the finished product. And this finished design will be available on HoboWithWood.com uh, along with some other surprises. So don't go anywhere. I, because with the magic of YouTube, we can have a finished product that quick. So there we go. There's our buck. Our dough standing together there. Snowflakes. Some trees, more snowflakes, and more snowflakes. And back around, there's the buck's butt. <laughs> and then back to the buck. And then, if you look real close there, like I said, I put a, a star design that I actually <clears throat> freehand drew out in Lightburn. And then a snowflake up there. And then uh, this, I put a little hobo in the middle of the snowflake. So, let's see, where is the door? There's the door. That opens up. That opens up. There we go. And you access your T-light. Let's take a look here. Boom, yeah. I don't know how well that shows up in here on camera, but that's pretty neat. Maybe a little bit larger T-light, but that looks pretty good. I like it. So that design will be available on hobowithwood.com. Now the surprise. For those who have hung around to this point, <clears throat> today is September the 20th. And between now and Tuesday next week, look at the calendar. So a week uh, about a week the template the lantern template will be free to download on hobowithwood.com so the file you just watched me create this with is 100% free for about a week on hobowithwood.com I also have I'll have this file on hobowithwood.com. Did I say that's where it's going to be? Hobowithwood.com. This file will be on there for download, but not free. <clears throat> and my Halloween version, which is here. We got the little haunted house and spider web. The spider hanging from the web. Spider web wraps around a few bats. The bats are getting closer. The ghost or the hands coming up from the grave there. 
a uh, little ghost coming up from the graveyard. A lot of things going on. And then there's your door. It swings open. Happy Halloween. You can put your tea light in there. And on this one, I've got some bats in the spider web up in the top there. Spiders have spun a web and the bats flew into them. They've gotten stuck. And we've got the cat and the crescent moon on the top. So this file is available on hobowithwood.com. This file is available on hobowithwood.com. And for the next approximate week, the template will be free. So for those who have hung around, you are going to be privileged to, to be, uh, I say it's a privilege because I'm impressed with this file. It's a really good file. It's free. Those guys who watched a few minutes of this and checked out, well, they missed out. So thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. A huge thank you to my patrons. The last ser series that I did on fixing the files in Lightburn, files that you purchased elsewhere, man, I did this two-part series. Uh, must have been pretty well received because those garnered me quite a few patrons and I am so thankful for the new patrons welcome aboard and guess what guys the patrons have had this lantern template now for several days prior to you even knowing about it patrons have early access to files they have early access to more free files so consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash hobo with wood and if you just aren't able to help me out on a monthly subscription consider doing a super thanks down below or if you don't even want to do that if you would like to help contribute to this channel without spending one extra dime use this link right here anytime you need to go to Amazon and purchase anything you're gonna go buy you some new dog treats you're gonna go buy you some ink cartridges you use this link hobowithwood.com slash Amazon. It's going to take you to the same Amazon. All it does is lets Amazon know that you've gone there because I asked you to, and they're going to give me a little commission off of anything you buy. And it won't cost you a penny extra. It's just going to help me and help this channel. So put that in your bookmarks. Save that. hobowithwood.com slash Amazon. And anytime you need to purchase anything, you'll be contributing to this channel and your support is greatly appreciated. So until the next video, I'm Steve, Hobo with Wood, and I'm out.